Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, who is your God and how powerful is he? Those are questions that are addressed in the plagues. Last week, we left Moses at a point where he was feeling pretty down because he had gone and done what God had told him to do. He went to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. And Pharaoh's response was, you are lazy. And the people are lazy and no longer are we going to provide straw for them to make bricks, but we're going to require them to gather their own straw and still make the same number of bricks. And so now Pharaoh's mad at Moses and the Israelites are mad at Moses and Moses is kind of frustrated. God, I did what you said me to do. And this is what has happened. And God's response to Moses is, Moses, it's not about you. And you need to realize that. And you need to know that. And God says, it's all about me and all that I will do. And then he says, Moses... Now see what I will do to Pharaoh, and he will let my people go. It's going to take a series of plagues, and that's what our focus is on today. God sent a series of ten plagues. For the sake of time, we didn't read chapters 7 through 11, but instead we just heard a good sampling of what the plagues were about from chapter uh, 10 the eighth and the ninth plagues, the plague of locusts and the plague of darkness. But this morning, I do want to cover all of the plagues. And, and what is that about? What was happening? What was going on? Well, we need to go back to those two opening questions. Who is your God? And how powerful is he? The Egyptians would have answered that question, God? You mean gods, don't you? Because the Egyptians had 80 different deities that they worshipped. 80 different gods that uh, were influence over every single aspect of their lives. And they were a very religious people. They built many beautiful temples to their gods, platforms of worship, statues and idols of of their gods and they worshiped these gods that they believed provided for them all of their needs enabled the crops to grow took care of their health provided the sunshine and so they worshiped 80 different gods and all these gods can be kind of categorized down into three main important things in the life of the Egyptians that these gods oversaw. That was the Nile River, the land, and the sky. The Nile was so important to Egypt. It provided them with with water. There was fish for them to eat. It provided irrigation for their crops. And it was a means of transportation through all of the various tributaries off from the Nile. The Nile was extremely important. The land was important to them. For the crops that they they raised, the, the livestock that they had, the blessings of building a home and using the resources to build their homes and, and their cities and places to live. The sky was important. The sun Actually, the sun god, Ra, was one of their most important gods that they worshipped. It provided all the sunshine for their crops to grow and for them to have food to eat. But also the, the sky, or the, the moon, and the weather. If you look at the plagues, the ten plagues, the first two, the Nile being turned into blood, frogs coming from everywhere, those two plagues are in regards to the Nile River. The next four plagues, gnats, flies, um, the death of the livestock, and boils on the people, all were in effect towards the gods that oversaw things for them on land. 
And the last four plagues, uh, the plagues of, of hail and locusts and darkness and the death of the firstborn, all were in reference to the gods that oversaw the sky. The important thing to note is that the plagues were not simply a judgment upon the Egyptian people and what they had done to the Israelites, but the plagues were a judgment against all of the false gods of Egypt, as God showed that he was the one and only God, the only true God, the creator of everything, the sustainer of everything. And so he sends these plagues one after another, that probably took place over a period of a number of months as they were going through these things. And we see in these plagues the power of God, the all-powerful Yahweh. The plagues come when he says they're going to come, exactly when he says they're going to come. The plagues come with incredible intensity and force and devastation. Some of these things they had. Some of these things were everyday things. They had frogs. The frogs were good. The frogs were a reminder that, uh, of fertility because every year the Nile would flood and the waters would go out into the farmland and deposit nutrients into the soil. And then as the water would recede, there would be pools that would be left, and from those pools would come frogs. So the frogs were sacred to them. The, so the frogs were a reminder that they were going to have another good crop. It was illegal to harm a frog. But when the plague of the frogs came, they had frogs everywhere. There were frogs in their homes. There were frogs in their beds. There were frogs in the bowls of dough that they were trying to knead into making bread. Frogs everywhere. They could not walk without stepping on a frog. Frogs they were not supposed to hurt. Frogs that they worshipped. They had locusts before, but never locusts like this. Locusts that came in and what the hail didn't destroy ate everything that was left. And the intensity of the darkness, they were, they were trapped. They couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't see their hand in front of their face. It was darkness that could be felt, is how the Bible describes it. But the control of God, because it becomes clear as going through the plagues, that as the Egyptians are experiencing the plagues, the Israelites in Goshen are not. The Egyptians are struggling in complete, absolute darkness, and the sun is shining on the Israelites. And the plagues end exactly when God says they're going to end. God is in complete control. And he is showing he is the one and only God. As he is seeking to call the Egyptians to repentance. As he is seeking to, to call them to see and know him as the one and only true God. Because while all this is taking place, we have to remember that what are the Egyptians doing? They're praying to their 80 gods. They're worshiping at all of these different worship places. Praying for their gods to help them. And there's no relief. And when they look to their, their worship leaders and the magicians to help, all they do is they, they make things worse. And so they're praying. And there are those who are starting to understand the one true God and the power of God. Chapter 9, verse 20 says that when some of Pharaoh's officials heard about the hail that was coming, 
The few cattle that they had left, they went out and brought them inside. And they made sure their servants were all indoors because they knew it was going to be bad. God had warned them it was going to be bad. And they believed. Actually, we'll, as we move into, in the next couple of weeks, move into chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 38 says that there were Egyptians who left with the Israelites. There were those who came to know God as the one and only from Egypt. But it was a difficult time for them. The majority were praying to their gods and nothing happened. They were becoming very frustrated with Pharaoh. Pharaoh, who also was a god and looked at as one of their gods who was supposed to make sure everything was going well for them. And even his officials were saying, just let the people go. They were struggling with this and getting no relief. You see, things completely turned around. Because it is now the Egyptians who are feeling oppressed. It is now the Egyptians who are feeling humiliated. It's now the Egyptians who are living in hopelessness. There's no food left. There's no crops left. Everything's wiped out. They say to Pharaoh, Egypt has been destroyed. Through these plagues, there's also a message for the Israelites. As they're experiencing the sun shining and the blessings of God. Message for the Israelites, a message for us, a, a reminder that idols are worthless. Looking to anything else other than God for protection, for salvation, for blessings, for hope is worthless. Looking to wealth like the rich young ruler in our gospel reading today, it can all be gone in an instant. Looking to our, our own abilities, our, 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 our own um, uh, talents in order to, to trust and rely on ourselves alone, it's worthless. God is the one and only God, the God who protects as we look at the incredibleness of the, and, the, and the power and the might of these plagues, sometimes we, we forget, yeah, but look at the, the miracle and the power of the fact that the Israelites were protected from them. Sometimes we go through each and every day, and it's just another day. It's just another normal day. We need to be reminded, no, it's not. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Every day is a day under his grace and his mercy. Every day is a day under his love and his protection. Every day is a day where the Lord is with us and walks with us and provides and protects as he expresses his love to us and all of his blessings. And, and the third message, and we heard it in our reading today to the Israelites, was to pass the story on. And they did. From generation to generation. God's great deliverance. God's great protection. And as we are to pass the story on. The story on of the one and only God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The God who in his grace and his love and his mercy is our great deliverer. The one who sets us free from all of our enemies. The one who swallows them up. After Moses was dis disturbed and struggling with everything that was going on, and God said to him, you watch now what's going to happen. God said to Moses, go back to Pharaoh. And Moses did with his brother Aaron. And again say to Pharaoh, let my people go. 
And Aaron showed the power of God as he threw down the staff, and the staff turned into a snake. Pharaoh called his magicians, and they were able to throw down staffs and make snakes as well by the power of Satan. But the snake of God swallowed them up. That's how the Exodus began. God swallowing them up. It ends, as we're going to hear in a couple weeks, with, it ends with the Egyptians trying to follow the Israelites into the Red Sea, and the Red Sea swallows them up. God swallows up the enemies of his people. He is the great deliverer. And we fast forward into the New Testament era and God who sent his son to swallow up our enemies, to set us free, to deliver us. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 beautifully outlines the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus Christ and all that that means. Our resurrection hope that we have because of Jesus Christ. To know that the relationship we have for our God is for all eternity. We'll be with him forever. And towards the end of chapter um, 15, Paul says, And death has been swallowed up in victory. God is our great deliverer who swallows up our enemies. Everything that would seek to destroy our relationship with him. So we go back to those questions. Who is your God? And how powerful is he? Our God is the Almighty. Our God is Yahweh. Our God is the one who is the deliverer, the defender, the provider, the protector. Our God is the one who makes his promises and who fulfills those promises, and who completes those promises as he swallows up all of our enemies in Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise for prayer.